Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Grand Avenue Church of Christ that meets at 619 North Grand Avenue here in Sherman, Texas. We want you all to know, especially, especially to our visitors, that you are our honored guest. We really and truly appreciate your presence in the audience today as well as in the, the viewing audience. And we would love to have you present with us. Um, we are still following the CDC, uh, trying to do what is asked of us in regards to uh, trying to be as safe as we possibly can, uh, not only for ourselves, but for all that are concerned. And so when you come to visit with us, uh, at this time, we're still following regulations in regards to putting on our masks while we're here. Uh, we're getting our temperatures taken at the door, and uh, you're welcome to. Uh, we're, we're doing the sanitizing, the whole nine. And we hope that you're okay with that, because it's all about the safety of everyone that is, that is in, this, in this room. Uh, and you are very, 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 very important to us. So please um, abide according to that with us and uh, for us and everything will be doing just, just fine. It's good to see the family together. Thank you for all of your prayers, not only for myself, but for everyone that we prayed for and about uh, throughout this week. We had a lot. And I was sick and I was shut in. And so we're just thankful ahead of time. Uh, I'm saying that for me, but I'm sure I, uh, uh, everyone that has been prayed for and requested are saying the same things. Community Service Ministry, please remember uh, about, the, about the tables. On the end of the tables, those containers there are there, and there's a list on the table of different items that go into those uh, containers. So please try to abide by what is on the list. Uh, don't try to just go and get something and throw it out what you want. There is a requirement, there is a list generated in there that's there for a certain reason. So please uh, don't forget about it. Let's fill it up and keep filling it up so that at the time when they are uh, dispersed, there will be plenty to go around for each and every one that possibly can be able to receive it. Um, learning workshop April the 9th at 10 o'clock from 10 to 12, Grand Avenue. A congregation providing you with information on how to expand your income. So it's a learning work workshop tells you how to expand your income. Then I remember all the sick and shut-in as I've already mentioned that are on our list. Uh, several uh, came in this morning. We, we prayed about it in the room in the back. And uh, but you may know something that we don't. And so if you do that when the times for prayer come. Just Remember them in your heart. And always remember this, brothers and sisters, is that when we pray, the person that may be here in front of you may not remember all the names and all those things, but us as Christians individually, we need to be praying. Don't get offended if somebody don't say the name that was called out. They say, and I know we need to practice as men to, if we're not going to call out all of them, maybe don't call out any. But then maybe that's a practice we got to come to. But you can't get upset if we don't. If we pray an earnest prayer, God will take care of the rest of that. He'll take care of the rest of that. So don't let your emotions and your feelings get in the way of the Spirit. Because God is able to do things that we're not able to do. And so, But let us try to remember all those and all of our sick and shut in and our prayers. And again, that's April the 9th for the, for the workshop uh, from 10 to 12 here at Grand Avenue. I'm glad that came back up. And it's just going to be providing you with information pertaining to how you can expand expand your, your income. God is good all, all the time. time. And all the time, God, God is, is good, good to us. Indeed, He is, and He has blessed us to be here today. And I see in the family those who I didn't see on last Lord's Day, and some are out for personal reasons, some for medical reasons, whatever it is, you're here today, and we're thankful to God that you're here and that you're better. And uh, so we're, we're just glad to see you. Uh, we're we're going to be blessed today. We've got a young man that's going to be uh, speaking God's word this morning. We've heard him before, but we're always encouraged when he comes back uh, and looking forward to hearing him. And uh, that's Brother Charles' son, Charles Shaw. Amen. 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 He's, he's ready, willing, and definitely able uh, to proclaim God's word. So that's going to be wonderful. And then I was surprised and blessed and, and, a, and a real, really good, happy surprise uh, that my son showed up. Amen. Uh, him and my grandson. So I can leave songs. I had him up for leave song. But instead, I got his dad up here. He was with, he came back that he was ready. He said, Man, there's something I can do 
Help dad out today, buddy. He's going to help his daddy out. First of all, just being here helps his daddy out. That's See him right. healthy and well. And keep my daughter in law and my granddaughter in your presence. They had to travel to Greenwood Avenue because they have responsibilities there now. And just pray that they have a safe journey there and a safe return as well. But we're going to be blessed with some, some, some good singing and some good preaching and some wonderful fellowship. Amen. Amen. We're just going to have a wonderful time in the Lord and show him how much we appreciate his blessing, his blessing to us. At this time, we're going to ask that you would bow with me as we go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, God Almighty, we come this morning humbly bowed and wonderfully thankful. We didn't know last night when we laid down that we were going to wake up this morning, but we did. And we say thank you. We ask to God that with that, that we will show ourselves uh, accordingly to the uh, worship service and uh, attentively to everything that shall take place in this building this morning. We know, God, that you are here in our presence. We know that Jesus is with us this morning. We know that the Holy Spirit is here. So I just pray, God, that we realize that we're here. And that we will give our all in this worship service. And we will sing with the Spirit and sing with the understanding as well as pray with the Spirit and pray with the understanding. And as the Scripture says, all that would worship you must do it in spirit and in truth. So we ask God Almighty that you would move us to be ever dutiful, ever accountable, ever responsible, ever loving, to want to give back to you on this day in appreciation for all that you have done for us every day. So we ask God that as we go through this service, that as you look down upon us right now in each and every one of our individual hearts, that we can stand accountable, that you look down on us with favor, to look down on us, Heavenly Father, with a smile, knowing that we're doing our best to do our best. And if there's anything that's in the way or hindering us from doing that, then it will be moved, and then we can give to you the honor and the glory and the praise that you do on this day. Amen. We ask that you, God, keep and direct us. We <laughs> with your man servant that's going to speak before us this morning. We thank you for his ability. We thank you for his love for the word. Yeah. And just move his heart, Heavenly Father, as the Holy Spirit gives him that opportunity claim that truth. We're thankful for the song meter today. Amen. That you will move his heart in the same direction as he proclaims your word through song. That he will sing and make melody and we all together make melody in our hearts unto you, Almighty God. Amen. That at the end of the day when this building, the doors are locked and closed to the next appointed time, that we all can leave this place knowing that we've been in the presence of the Almighty God. Amen. God, keep on the records as we go forward. And we always want to say before we end this this prayer, thank you for our minister, Brother Shaw. Amen. Thank you for his love for the truth. Thank you for his, his years of service. And thank you, Heavenly Father, for he and Sister Shaw being the Christian examples they have always been here at this congregation. Now be with us as we go forward. It's in Jesus, your son, and I will say his name. We pray and we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Amen.
books, but if you did, it'd be found on page 118. This song is entitled Shelter in the Time of Storm. Yes. The Lord's our rock, in Him we hide. He's a shelter in the time of storm.
I knew the Lord was there. All right. All I had to do was just call him back. Amen. And he woke up. And I want the church to pray for her. Yeah. Amen. And when I left her, she was, she was grateful. And I was too. Amen. So I'm going to go to the Lord and thank him some more.
time, I hope it's not too much of a task, if you are able, I'm going to ask you to stand as we sing this last song. Our God, He is alive. Yes. Yes. Stand with yes. Our God, He is alive. Yes. I know many may not think that He is on the throne because of what they see, but we don't walk by what we see. Our God, He is alive. Amen. There is beyond the azure blue a God concealed from human sight. He tends his eyes with heavenly view and brings the world with his great mind. I know there is a God. He is alive. I can we live and we serve.
have these young men who have come up under me and working with me and doing a great job. Yeah. Uh, Larry Chappelle, after uh, our son here, is coming up. These young men are going on out and they're doing a great, great job. And so I just, I'm getting old and I'm going to have to do something soon. But one thing for sure, they have been taught. And we know that they believe in God. And their families believe in God. But today, I'm going to get to introduce my own son. Charles Leroy Shaw. And uh, I've enjoyed him doing this. And I see Brother Walker back there. We're just happy to have these young men who are sharing God's word. And the church is growing and doing better. And uh, we just hope God will bless and continue to bless this church. Thank you, Clifton. Amen. The singing that you have done this morning. Amen. I don't know whether uh, my son is going to sing or he's going to have you sing, but one thing for sure, let's enjoy God today. Amen. Because he is really doing a great job for us. Now, I'm going to drop this in on you. In three Saturdays, three Saturdays, brothers, we are looking to have a brother's meeting. Three Saturdays. Right after uh, uh, 12 o'clock, we're going to meet somewhere and, and come on and eat with us. And we're going to sit down and have a nice long talk. Amen. We can do that. Amen. But we do need to fire back up and get some things done. A lot of things that we need done. Amen. And so we're asking yes. all of you, wives, encourage your husbands if they can. Some of them have to work. Some of them doesn't. You need to know in advance so that we, you, we can all get together yeah, and have yeah, a yeah. nice long talk yeah, yeah. Right. with each other. Yeah. Yes. And some of these brothers, uh, I'm hoping, are uh, going to be able to get that day and share it with us. Now, on the ninth, on the ninth, we're having a workshop and it's trying to teach young folk and middle-aged folk. I don't need a job. <laughs> but uh, young folk and middle-aged folk that uh, if you want some good teaching on how to do your application and get a better paying job well, we'd like to see you get that but some men don't come one of them was a doctor and he left his job to go out to help young folk find jobs and I just want to come up and tell you that now I'm a hush and I'm going to let my son come up and do what he has to May God bless him and, and remember uh, all of those that are sick, Amen. those that are Brother Felton's wife passed out on him and, and God woke him up Amen. and he was able to shake her back to what right. she needed to be in. Amen. Pray for all of us. Yes. Pray for all of us. May God bless you. May he keep you. And I don't know who's doing that, but I'm going to thank you. There is a
face this morning, let me know that God has smiled. Yeah. 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 And let me know that God has smiled on me. Amen. Yeah. This world is going through a tough stretch. Right yeah. 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 So much stuff is going on. So yeah. we need to be thankful to God that He's smiled on us. Yeah. Our own clock can get us up this morning. So I touch each and every one of us. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He yeah. smiled and gave us the breath of life. <clears throat> Enable us to get up and stand up and take one step in front of us. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank God Almighty for bless me with safe travel. Amen. 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 I want to ask y'all to bless my wife. She's uh, not feeling good today. She's dealing with the loss of uh, a parent, a mother, sister, aunt, cousin, all in one month last year. So, wow. yeah. so she's, uh, I'm trying to be that fool. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't been, I haven't faced what she's dealing with. So. Exactly. Yeah. I do what I can do. Just pray that God will touch her heart. Yeah. 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 Right. 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 But she did tell me to say to y'all, hello. Mm -hmm. yeah. She wished she could have been here, but she couldn't. And Gabrielle and Matthew, they are dust now. So Gabrielle got her own job, her own place. <laughs> she working today. Matthew down in St. Marcus. Mm -hmm. Got wow. his own job, his own apartment. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just thankful that they still alive. Yeah. 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 The worship service this morning has been very uplifting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Scripture. Did it very briefly, you know. The prayer that we made by the brother was very touching. Yeah. Uh, made me think about the time when I was in the hospital. Mm -hmm. What well, God did you to bring me through it. Yeah. 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 I'm very grateful that he brought me through it and he brought me back to where I am now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't lose no memory. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because yeah. back to all my physically moving and so. Yes. Yeah. I'm thankful. So. Amen. 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 Let's pray God this morning that he will allow the spirit to guide me. Uh, Right. Yes. Three to serve to you all this morning. It's been three oh, years really? since I last preached. So I was right. waiting to get back in the south. All right. So now I'm here, so you hear it? You hear that? Yeah. My knees knocking. The scripture that was read was Genesis right. chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. The Bible says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye should not eat of every tree of the garden. All right. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God has said, Ye should not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Well, and the serpent yeah. said unto the woman, <laughs> Ye should not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. He should be as God's, knowing good and evil. All right. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the tree thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons to wear as I studied the scripture, this is a scripture that we have all read many times. Mm -hmm. We all know the story of mm -hmm. Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you that every time you read the Bible or a story, you can read it a hundred times and you can come up with a different exactly. lesson. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So as I studied this lesson, I was asking myself, what can I say about this lesson that everybody may not know of? This may not be fitting at this moment. Mm -hmm. So I studied and I pondered I came to verse number three, and I, this is my first time using my tablet, so this is something new. <laughs> verse number three says, But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. <laughs> so I pondered, what subject could I give? What theme could I give of this lesson? <laughs> so as I was looking and dug down, I came down to two topics. One could be, where should we base our faith? And the other one was faith versus the strategies of Satan. Mm -hmm. well. So I think I'm just going, one part going to be, what should, what should be based on faith against the strategies of the Satan? Of Satan. Right. You know, when you think about this pandemic we're in now, mm -hmm. we need to understand that this can be an obstacle that can affect what we face our faith. Well. Can this pandemic cause us to lose faith? Can it cause us to start questioning God? My mind. When catastrophes, the devastating things happen to our lives, 
Satan will use these devices mm -hmm. to come in to call you to lose faith in God. Mm -hmm. Cause you to question, why is God allowing this to happen to mm -hmm. me? But can this pandemic cause us to lose faith? But let us look at this. Let's say that we are going to begin a journey. And on this journey, it's the journey that you have to take. You can't get around it. You've got to go on this journey. Yeah. But you are told that on this journey, it's going to be a dangerous journey. Well, Along this journey, there are going to be landmines that you well, can't see. As close as planted that you can't detect. Wow. There are going to be pitfalls and quicksands covered up that's hidden. Mm -hmm. All along this journey. Yeah. But somebody gives you a map. Mm -hmm. I ask you, what are you going to do with that map? Mm -hmm. How are you going to treat that map? Mm -hmm. Are you going to just fold it up and put it in your pocket? Mm -hmm. Are you going to lay it around for the collect us? Mm -hmm. Or are you just going to glance at it from time to time? Mm -hmm. I tell you, you're going to take good care of that map because that map can save your life. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But brothers and sisters, we are all on a journey. Right. And this journey is called life. Yes. Once you are born, you automatically start this journey. Mm -hmm. There is no way around it, above it, or under it. We mm -hmm. all have to go on this journey mm -hmm. called life. Mm -hmm. And on this journey called life, all the dangers I mentioned before is all out amongst this journey. Thankful we got a God that loves us, yeah. uh -huh. that gave us a map yeah. Yeah. for you. And this map shows us where all the landmines, yeah. all the explosives, quicksand, and pitfalls are located. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. so all we got to do is follow the map. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. Well, how do we treat the map? What is a map? This map that God has given us is the Bible. Mm -hmm. yeah. This Bible will navigate us through this journey mm -hmm. if we will study it. Mm -hmm. And dig down deep and see what God is telling us. It will point you when you are approaching danger. It's still right. right. So how are you going to treat this map? Are you going to just lay it up on your shelf and let it connect with us? Or are you going to study it daily? If someone comes to your house and open your Bible up, is it going to have that new book smell? Mm. Or is it going to make a sound that when you hear it opening up? Mm -hmm. If it does either one of those two things, it lets you know one thing. The book has to be open to be able to study. So how are you going to make this journey if you don't open the book mm. and study this map? Mm -hmm. This morning, this is going to carry two points. I normally preach the three points. But this one's going to carry two. I'm going to try to save time because I have listened to my sermon. Then. Each time I tell myself, it's going to be timely. <laughs> but each one averages out to be 55 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to try my very best to be timely, but I can't promise you. If I can cut it down, I'm going to do my best. But where the Spirit carries me, that's where right. I'm right. 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 The first point is our salvation is obtained through our faith. The second point would be God's salvation will fulfill it regardless of what we do. Right. We think in terms of our salvation is obtained through our faith. What is salvation? Well, salvation, it is a preservation of or a deliverance from harm, from ruin, or from loss. Spiritually, for us, it's a deliverance from sin right. and its harmful consequences, but it's done by faith in Jesus Christ. God has given us faith. But what is faith? Hebrews 11 and 1 tells us, we all know this verse, we all can quote it. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, yes, the evidence of things not seen. Now, in order for us to be pleasing to God, we've got to have faith. Amen. But in order for your faith to be effective and to be strong, your faith needs an obstacle. Mm. And now someone may say, the Bible says faith is the evidence of things not seen. Uh -huh. If we can see it, then it's not faith. Uh -huh. and that is true, but faith still needs an obstacle in order for it to be mm. effective. Right. Mm. When you apply for your job and you went into the for your interview, and they tell you that. I'm going to give you the job, but you got this many hours, you got to this and that, this many days, and at the end of the week or bi weekly, however you get paid, I'm going to pay you a check. Now, you start on Monday, have you seen that check yet? Mm -hmm. You haven't seen the check yet, but why are you going to work? Because you got faith, when you do this, you don't get that check. But you can see that check by our faith. In order for us to believe in God, it needs an obstacle. When Jesus died, he went to heaven, back to heaven. He said, I'm going back to a place to prepare a place for you. 
Mm -hmm. All right. And if I go back to the prayer place for you, I'm going to come back to get you. Mm -hmm. So our obstacle is heaven. Mm -hmm. And our faith knows we want to make it to heaven. So yes. it, that's the obstacle that our faith needs. Right. And if we want to be pleasing to God, we got to keep our faith in God. All right. Mm -hmm. When we believe in Jesus, God took us in as his sons and daughters. He gave us heaven, he gave us peace, and he bestowed on all of us his blessings. All right. Now knowing this, where do we base our faith? Mm. Do we base it on our own works? Or is our faith based on salvation? Well, our salvation is obtained through our faith. All right. Adam and Eve, they had salvation. They lived in salvation before that serpent came about. <laughs> and salvation is just the light way of ease of life. When they was in the garden, they didn't have to work hard mm -hmm. before the serpent came about. Mm -hmm. The earth just yielded up its fruits. Mm -hmm. right. They didn't have to do any hard labor. There were no uh, uh, painful childbirth for the woman before that serpent came about. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they had salvation. But was it attained through the works or was it attained by faith? Yeah. It is by faith that we reach salvation. Yes. By faith we receive blessings from God. Serving the Lord is also done by faith. All right. The world will tell you why do you go to church so much? You go to church on Sunday morning. You go to church on Sunday evening at night and Sunday mornings. But, but then on Wednesday you go back to church again. I have people tell me that that's too much church going on. <laughs> <laughs> but I know they don't understand what it is. So therefore, it's up to me to show them. Mm -hmm. right. Serving the Lord is done by faith. For Hebrews 11 and 6 says, But without faith, mm -hmm. it is impossible mm -hmm. to please Him. Mm -hmm. Who it is that we try to please? We are trying to please God. Yes. Yes. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. Right. We must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Yes. So Adam and Eve, they're in this garden. Got it going good. Got salvation. They're strolling through the garden. Mm -hmm. Then along come this serpent. Uh -huh. And Genesis 3, 1 through 5. Now, have anybody actually just sit down and thought about it? Eve comes to Satan with a talking snake. Mm -hmm. Not only will she come to Satan with a talking snake, she will come to Satan with a walking talking That's snake. That's right. right. <laughs> Remember this snake before that day had legs. That's right. right. It was after the curse that God said from this day forth, we're going to be on your bed and taste the dust of this. Right. So Eve is talking to the snake. Uh -huh. And the snake, Satan, has strategies to bring negative consequences <laughs> into our lives. If you ever saw a group of guys come together, what's the subject, man? Most of the time it's about football. They talk about how these teams have strategy. They watch the film on how this team is going to beat this team. Yeah. See what their tendencies are. See what kind of package they for. What this guy does in this situation. Well, brothers and sisters, we all got film out of us. Mm -hmm. Satan got film on each one of you. Mm -hmm. Let see what your tendencies are. He knows what button you push to move you. What mm -hmm. button to motivate yeah. you to do certain things. Yeah. Uh -huh. He got film on us. Mm -hmm. So we need to get film on him. <laughs> and this is 3, 1 through 5. We're going to see some of his strategies. Mm -hmm. So when he approached us, we would know how to deal with Satan. Mm -hmm. So it would be us dealing with Satan, it would be God dealing with Satan. But in verses, the first five verses of chapter 3, the first recorded lie of human history was, was made. Satan came to Eve and said, Hath God said you may not eat of every tree of the garden. But first of all, we need to take a long look at that. There's a word missing from there. If you're in the verse started, the snake was more subtle, more crafty, more mm -hmm. sneaky, more slippery than any other animal God had made. Mm -hmm. And he said that the Lord God, God has made. But Satan comes along and says, Has God told you you may eat of every tree of the garden? Right. But first of all, this is the first part of Satan's strategy. Mm -hmm. He told Eve, Has God, Elohim, that's dealing with God's power, the power that God has, that we know he has. He left the word deliberately, Lord, he left that out. Yes. Lord is dealing with the relationship of mankind with God. Mm -hmm. Say the first strategy is he got to break our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. If he can break your relationship with God, then he can 
pretty much motivate you to do whatever he wants you to do. Right. He told Eve, and God said you may eat or not eat of every tree of the garden. And Eve responds, says, of every tree of the garden you may eat, but of the one that's in the midst of the garden, so you may not eat of it. Neither shall we touch it, and this we die. Now Satan has no interest in all them trees of the garden. His only interest is that one tree that's in the midst of right. the garden. Right. And this is another strategy of Satan. When he comes to you, He'll come to you looking good. Because you notice Eve talking to a snake. In our time in history, we are afraid of snakes. But she was not afraid of that snake. That's right. At that time, that snake wasn't harmful. Right. She could have picked it up and petted it if she wanted to. Right. But she's talking to the snake. So right off the bat, the mystery knows the snake was good because the Bible said after creation. God thought everything was good. Yeah. Yeah. So everything was good at that point. When Satan comes to you, he's going to come to you looking good. Whatever, whatever he's going to say is going to sound good. Mm -hmm. It's going to smell good. It's going to feel good. It's going to grow, attract your attention to whatever it is he wants you to do. So after he said, of every tree of the garden can you eat. I believe he been walking by that tree day by day. Uh, haven't looked at it, haven't touched it, or anything. Uh, mm. But Satan came in and told Eve, right. added one word yeah. to what God said. Mm -hmm. He appealed to her through a command of God. Mm -hmm. Now, command of God was that mankind be dominant over everything on earth. Genesis yeah, 1 right. 28 right. said, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth. And to do it and have dominion. This word dominion is simply be dominant. Mm -hmm. To rule over something. Mm -hmm. They were have to have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Mm -hmm. So what was his temptation to Eve? Mm -hmm. He said, she said rather, we may eat of every tree of the garden except the one that's in the midst. Mm -hmm. Now Satan said, you will not surely die. Yes. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, you will become as God, knowing good and evil. Mm. Right there, Satan then drew blood. Yeah. He knows that in our minds, when we think of God, we think of an entity that has power, that's powerful, yes. that's dominant, that dominates something. Yeah. Larry Bird said that Michael Jordan is like a God on the basketball court. Mm -hmm. Now, he's not saying that he is the actual God. Right. But Jordan was better than everybody else. Right. He dominated everybody else. That's right. So when hmm. he told Eve, you will be as God, knowing good to evil. Mm -hmm. Eve was thinking, God is powerful. Baby. He's wise. Mm -hmm. So now she's looking at that tree. Yeah. She, went, she hadn't looked at that tree up until the serpent, the serpent right. tricked her. Mm -hmm. yes. He said, of all the trees you may eat, got Eve focusing on this hand. By this left hand, this is where he distracted. His main thing is that tree is in the midst. Mm -hmm. She's focusing on what that he said the tree can do for her. Mm -hmm. She distracted. Uh -huh. She got distracted because of the power and that it looked good. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So now, after she did all of this, the temptation of Eve was the fact that they would be a God. Mm -hmm. Satan told you that your eyes will be open and you will become as God, knowing good and evil. Satan is telling Eve right there that God is holding back on you. Uh, God knows the day you eat thereof, you will be as a God as he is. Uh, you will know good and evil. Yes. Mm. So Satan, Eve, took the truth. Did she with her husband? Mm. And convinced her husband. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now the only way Satan can get to that man, I asked myself, why didn't Satan come out? Mm -hmm. Why did he go to Eve? This is not taking no shots at nobody. <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm going to sit right behind this pulpit. <laughs> the Bible speaks as the woman has a weaker vessel. So, in Satan's mind, I can't get to that man because that man is stubborn. Mm -hmm. So, if I get to this woman mm -hmm. and to see the woman, then she mm -hmm. can get to the man. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. When Eve was born, created, Eve looked good to Adam. That's right. and he wanted everything to take care of. Of Eve. Mm -hmm. So Eve was deceived, could 
convinced their husband, and they both ate of that tree. Mm. Satan told them that once you eat of the tree, you will become as God, as good as knowing good and evil. Uh -huh. It wasn't a subject you're going to eat and three days later, three weeks later, <laughs> this will come about. There was instant perception. Yeah. As soon as they ate of that fruit, the Bible says they knew. They saw and knew. What did they see and know? They saw and knew that they were naked. Now they've been walking all day long through the garden, however long they, before this period came about, with no clothes. Have noticed anything. But they ate that fruit and had instant perception. See, Satan going, they strategy to break the relationship with God. Uh -huh. Make you feel that God is holding back on you. Mm -hmm. right. And he's going to distract you from the truth, mm -hmm. his true motive, to get you focused somewhere else. Uh -huh. right. uh -huh. Eve has been focusing on that tree now. Mm -hmm. And she did, she satisfied everything that satisfies the flesh. There was three of check, three box check this. The lust of the eyes, the yes, lust right. of the flesh, and the pride of life. Mm -hmm. Verses 6 through 7. She satisfied all three of the boxes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm. When she said the sin, the tree making as God, she looked at the tree and saw it was good for food. She satisfied the lust of the eyes. Uh -huh. yeah. After it came through the eyes, which is your window to your processing unit, which is your heart, the processing unit processed it and sent it down and sent it through the body. The body, the flesh says, mm, we want to taste that. Mm -hmm. So now the flesh goes and gets the fruit. Eats the fruit. Uh -huh. She satisfied the lust of the eye. Now she can satisfy the lust of the flesh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But the next, which is the most crucial part, is the pride of life. Uh -huh. To me, the pride of life of all the boxes is the one that you want to pay most attention to. Because uh -huh. everything you look at and everything you taste isn't wrong. Uh -huh. Everything you look at and taste isn't going to send you to right. hell. Right. 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 But it's that pride of life box. Uh -huh. mm. That fruit gave them the desire to be make one wise. Mm. Yeah. And she saw this, we can be wise, we can be just like God. Uh -huh. mm. We don't have to answer to God. See, that's Satan's whole problem was. Right. Mm -hmm. He wanted his independence. Mm -hmm. yeah. He did not want to have to answer to God anymore. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be on the same level as God. Uh -huh. So yeah. therefore, mm -hmm. he got kicked out of heaven. No. Yes. Amen. And now, since he got kicked out of heaven, he's mad. So now he's going to plant his thought that he had with God mm -hmm. in our hearts. Yeah. Yeah. Now he can't make us do anything. Right. Uh -huh. you know, Phil Wilson made that statement, the devil made me do it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yes. Satan can't make you do anything. Uh -huh. It's a choice that you constantly make right. for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But what he do do, he plants the seed in your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Until you think about it enough, till his thought becomes your thought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then your thought becomes your decision. Come on. So now you did it. Now he influenced you to do it, right. but you made the choice to do it. Right. 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 So they ate right. that fruit. They saw that they were naked. The fruit gave them a greater awareness of their relationship with God. Right. It didn't make them a God. Mm -hmm. Now Adam and Eve, after eating their fruit, saw that that rosy picture that was painted by the serpent wasn't true. Right. Uh -huh. They had a consciously rude awakening. Mm -hmm. They saw they were naked. Uh -huh. They saw they were naked physically, but not only physically, they were naked spiritually. Uh -huh. What do you mean they were naked spiritually? Well, now they see sin. Sin came in. Mm -hmm. and they see the protection of God, those. Right. So now they are out there separated from God. They uh -huh. felt lonely. They felt they were out of touch yeah. with God. Like that kid that when his parents go into a crowd of people. Mm -hmm. Somehow, kids, you know how kids are, they get to want to run loose. Then they stray away from mom and dad. Look around, mom and dad is gone. Now they are fruit. Right. Now when Adam and Eve the fruit, not only did sin come into the world, fear and shame was born. Right. Into the world. Mm -hmm. So now they see they are out of touch with God. Mm -hmm. When we see in church, that puts us out of touch with God. Yes. We no longer have our protection there. That kid don't feel safe. That's right. Mom and dad's not there to protect them from home. Right. Now seeing God is out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Adam and Eve, they did all of this satisfied the flesh. Mm -hmm. They was overwhelmed and remorse and inevitable, inevitable misery spawned. They're a loss of faith 
has injected into all of these attendant holes. Mm -hmm. Where did they lose their faith? Mm -hmm. The Bible says in verse 3 that but the tree in the midst of the garden, do not eat it or touch it, lest you die. That is where they lost their faith. Right. Because they went and touched that tree. God told them to not touch the tree. Okay. All this time they had faith. What is faith? Faith is obedience. Faith is belief. You believe in something. They believed God up until the serpent came. Mm. They ate that fruit. They lost their faith. They're poor. Mm. You should ask yourself the question. Where should that faith have been based? It should have been based on the word of God. Amen. God said, do not eat it nor touch it. That right. was his word. That's where their faith should have been based. Right. Right. When we sin, we got to think about what we are doing. Yeah. When Satan approaches you, he's going to approach you with something that looks good, something that you specifically like, mm -hmm. that he knows that if I present this to him and present it to him this way, like I asked him, God, to the man, close to the line, to the line as I can get it. Not using your mouth to study in the word, Amen. you will not be able to see the distinction. Right. Yes, that's, right. that's right. That's why the Bible says we have Bereans to study daily to make sure what is being told us yeah. is true. Yeah. We got to study our Bible truth. Yeah. 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 Especially in this day and time of what we are looking at. We got the war in Russia. Yeah. Yeah. This pandemic is running rampant. Yeah. All of these things can cause us to question whether God still loves us, whether God is still alive. Uh, is God still with me? Why is God allowing this to happen to me? Well, I could have easily, when I was in my hospital bed, made this thing. Why did God let this happen to me? I didn't uh, done so much. I didn't done this. I had never done that. I ain't never done that. Mm, but mm. I didn't do that. I told myself when I went in, Satan is not going to get me. He's going to try, but he's not going to get me. I'm not going to lose my faith. And every night, I had a, my tablet charged up, my phone charged up. I went to bed every single night and listened to a gospel song. Yeah. Right. And I played it just loud enough so I could do a little bit of evangelism. Mm -hmm. I had just loud enough to so walk walked by my door and hear some gospel music. Mm -hmm. So they get a little Jesus when we're coming through. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I did. We got to base our faith That's right. on the word of God. Yeah. They lost their faith because they took their eyes off of their base mm -hmm. where it should have been based in the first place. Amen. Um, should have been based on God's word. When God tells us to do something, we should do it. Yeah. But when we rationalize with our feeble minds to do opposite of what God has told us to do, then we run into trouble. Right. For us to walk around without believing in God's word, for us to be preaching without faith in God's word, mm -hmm. is an act of suicide. Amen. Amen. It's deception and it's an evil ministry that misleads others. Amen. Amen. If you didn't know it, brothers and sisters, the people, your co-workers, your friends are watching you. Amen. Whether they tell you or not, they know what church you go to. Mm -hmm. They know where your church is located. Now in the city in Dallas, the biggest Dallas, you may can, can kind of get away with them not knowing where you go to church, but mm -hmm. Sherman. Everybody who knows, y'all are a member of Grand Avenue Church of Christ. Right. Right. Y'all are a member of that church that says that they don't want to go into heaven. Mm -hmm. Now, we didn't put that there. I know that's right. That's right. in the Bible. God said that. Yeah. But we take the blame for it because it goes against what they want to do. Yes, right. Yeah. Right. So they know where you go to church at. So if you got the club popping like they club popping. Uh -oh. You have to drink it like they drink it. Cursing you to prepare like they do. Reacting and responding to things the way the world does. Right. Uh, they're watching you. They may not say nothing to you, but through our eyes, it puts a blemish on the church. Right. Right. They never Amen. want to come become a member because they see you doing what you're doing. Yes. And if by some certain way, they decide, I'm going to just join that church and then become a member. But I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Yes. How can we say you shouldn't do that? They're going to tell you, well, you did it. Mm -hmm. So I can keep doing it. Right. we got to be that example to the world because the world doesn't know. All right. We Amen. know the truth, but the world doesn't. Amen. When we were his enemies, God still so loved the world that he still sent Jesus down to this earth. That's right. Jesus, knowing he was going to be killed, still came down and died once in a while. Yes. 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 We may have salvation. Now, he's worried here 
is salvation. When Jesus came down, so did salvation come down. That's right. And when each one, every one of us believed in Jesus, we all received salvation. Right. When you became a member of the Lord's church, we received salvation. God gave right. us peace. He gave us heaven. He gave us everlasting life. All right. The only way we're going to hold on to that is we got to be in his word. Right. We got to keep our faith based in the base, and that is in God's word. Our salvation is a pain through our faith. Yeah. If we're going to feed God with our faith, if our faith is strong and it's based in his word, we receive salvation. Right. But without faith, we don't have salvation. That's right. We got to keep our lives unblotted. God's salvation was fulfilled irregardless of what we do. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that God has given you peace, mm -hmm. salvation, the remission of our sins, Everlasting life in heaven without taking an account of our deeds. Mm -hmm. Did God sit back before the foundation of the earth was made? Hmm. Did he sit back and say, well, they're going to do these deeds here, so I'm going to give them this much salvation. Mm -hmm. They're going to do this, so I ain't going to give them this, but mm -hmm. because of this, I can live over that. Mm -hmm. God didn't sit back and right. take an account of what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. He knew what we was going to do. Yeah. But yet, he still sent his full salvation down to Amen. us. Right. He gave his all, his only begotten son, yes. to a people who were his enemies. Uh -huh. Salvation was given unto us. And by us accepting Jesus as the son of God, we obtained our faith and we retained salvation it was through uh -huh. our faith. Since all of these blessings have been given unto us, I believe this very hardly. John 3.16 says, But God so loved the world, yes. and he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. That last phrase, but have everlasting life. Yes. And all you've got to do is believe in Jesus. That Jesus is the Son of God. Now God gives all these blessings, but they have nothing to do with our words. Right. Have nothing to do with our deeds. Right. We must be united with the word. We must unite and with you. Now this tab, I'm not going to get you to dig This is just no fun here. <laughs> <laughs> I touched one thing and it linked off on me. But we got to keep our faith in God's word every day. Amen. That's right. And since what we do doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what the world thinks of us. Right. It doesn't matter how the world denounces us. It doesn't matter if we are scorned. Let the word blame us. We cannot let it affect when we base our faith. If you let it affect when you base your faith, then all the same strategies is going to come on board. If you break your relationship with God, it's going to come on board. The relationship of the church with each other, one with one another. Why do you think he brings so he tries to bring so much turmoil into the church? Right. Because if he can break break our relationship up with each other. Right. And we can get along with each other. Right. What useful is the church going to be? Right. Right. You see, Satan don't realize that he can't break this up. Right. So mm -hmm. He can try all he wants to, but God said, the gates of hell. Right. Hey, we're not to be against it. Right. But we got to say unified for the world to see us. They, right. Right. they would yes. never want to come to the church. Mm -hmm. We got to at all times have our guard on. That's right. So what I would like to ask everyone this morning to ask ourselves mm -hmm. is where are you basing your faith? Right. Is it based on your works? Mm -hmm. Is it based on the Lord? Is it based on God's righteousness? Or do we really trust God? Right. Do we really trust God to take bring us through these tough times that we find ourselves in? Which being this pandemic, or are we relying on our own abilities. Yeah. Always saying, I can take care of myself. I don't need nobody's help. I don't need God's help right here. I can do this myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, Satan doesn't care That's right. about you doing good deeds. He wants you to do good deeds. He wants you to edify yourself. And edify is uplifting yourself. If you start uplifting yourself, mm -hmm. God will abase you. That's right. Yeah. He wants you to uplift yourself. Why? Satan don't care if you come to church every Sunday. We come every Sunday, we come every Wednesday. Satan does not care. 
And what he cares about is bringing your relationship up with God. Right. Right. Too many people today are worshiping God, but don't have a relationship with God. Right. They have to do whatever because they are thinking they are doing their deeds, but their heart is far from God. Right. Right. You've got to trust in God with everything. The world are we basing our faith. Well, let there be no doubt that whatsoever that you all who are going to be saved. I got to talk this here because the world teaches against this. Anybody who is going to be saved, anybody who is going to go to hell, has got to go to hell by baptism. Yeah. The world yeah. preaches against baptism. That's right. The world says that baptism is an outward representation mm -hmm. of, of this, of being saved. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be baptized. It's Pray and ask Jesus to come to your life. Yes, yes. Just pray to God. Say, I said Jesus as the son of your son. And he will come to your life and you'll save him. Uh -huh. If that was so, I need the word to answer some questions for me. Why is it that when Jesus came to John <laughs> to be baptized, and John said, I need to be baptized in you. Right. But Jesus said, no, this needs to be so. That's right. If it had to be so, why did it need to be so? Jesus is showing, if you're going to make it to him where I am, I'm showing you the pattern that you want to follow. That's right. So you got to be baptized. The second question is, if all you got to do is pray that Jesus is come into your life, why well, come in Acts 8, verse 36, it talks about the Ethiopian unit, right? Yes. In the desert. The angel told Philip to run to that chariot. He goes to the chariot, finds the guy, the Ethiopian unit, reading, and says, do you understand what you read? From that point on, the Ethiopian said, how can I understand unless someone teach me? Philip got up in that chariot, teach from that point on, and taught him Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, after this question, why did the Ethiopian even stop that chariot and say, see, here is water. What hinders me? What stops me from being baptized? Mm -hmm. if, if it wasn't required. Baptism is not an option. It's a commandment. Mm -hmm. That's right. If you're going to be saved, you've got to be baptized. Amen. That's why the EWU said, stop this chariot. I want to be baptized. And now, another drop on the drop on years. Why did they get down into the water? Right, Some say, just sprinkle me. Some just pour. They stopped and got down into the water. Yeah. Yeah. Which means you got to be submerged. Mm -hmm. yes. So sprinkling somebody is not baptism. <laughs> Pouring water on somebody is not baptism. Mm -hmm. The Bible says you got to do it this way. That's right. Bible says the blood of Christ is going to save you. People ask, I do you see the blood in the water? Hmm. We don't see the blood in the water. Come on. That's where faith kicks in. Yes. Amen. Our faith lets us know Jesus said it, and I believe it. And that's it. As long as you got faith that is there, when they don't understand it, your faith is what's motivating you to right. do the thing that you do. Right. So, right. right. We are standing on the face of the gospel. God gave us through his son, Jesus. Everything comes by faith. From entering heaven as, he as heirs, it comes by faith. Yes. In joy and peace, it comes by faith. Yes. Receiving blessings from God. And our prayers are all answered. It comes by faith. Yes. This is the conviction, my conviction, that I go by. Because I believe in God. Yes. I give offers to him. Mm -hmm. Preach the gospel. Abide in his church. Because I believe in God that I'm standing here before you this morning mm -hmm. admonishing you to base your faith in the word of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's because that we believe in this, that we pray by faith, we gather together and worship by faith, and we by faith we live. Mm -hmm. You see, no one wants to be deceived by Satan like Eve was. Mm -hmm. right. Yet despite too many people are still trying to serve God. Preach to God based on their own virtuous deeds. Yes, yes. Such people have already been deceived by the devil's strategy mm -hmm. because they're believing in themselves. Mm -hmm. They're not believing in the word of God. That's right. Satan has distracted them so much they believe in what they do. The word, the word preaches, take care of number one. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to take care of number one, why do we need God to take care of us? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Another big obstacle that we have as Christians is, you know, for me, I drive a route through the Dockport area, 
And I see it. People on the corners, every corner I go by, somebody's out there. Mm -hmm. They're asking for money. And even I have a reluctance sometimes, like thinking, man, they run a scam. He want money, then he signs. I got four kids, they're hungry. Or I'm homeless, I'm a veteran. Then I have to go back and I go home and get in the Bible. And some strange, God works out strange. Mm -hmm. I just pick the Bible and read a scripture. And some church will come up. You need to serve, you be levels to people because you make me serve an angel on the word. Mm -hmm. And this is the only time I go by one and don't give nothing. Now I don't have to always have money to give. But every time I get that mindset, mm -hmm. they trying to scam. Yeah. And I'm going to reach about not. Don't, I'm not even looking for that scripture. I just run right across it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I've just been over. God put that, he did that for a reason. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about what they think. Right. Mm -hmm. You do what God said to do. Right. 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 And your reward right. from God will be greater yeah. than what you can give to yourself by that people. Amen. Amen. So now That's I try so to keep at least $10, 10 one dollar bills. I pass the one, I have one to them. Go to the next one, get another call. I see one, I have one. And I always don't know how to have it, but we got to be aware that we could be serving angels not even knowing. Yes. 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 Satan deceived yes. Eve. Yes. Eve convinced her husband, and he ate. But what we need to understand, we let the world see is our faith in the gospel is our strength. Yeah. All the strength we get spiritually is comes through our faith in uh -huh. God. Uh -huh. If you don't believe in God's word, where are you going to get your strength from? Right. You can't get it from nowhere else. Uh -huh. Everything you try to do on your own, you become worse off. Uh -huh. So our strength comes through God's word. Right. And that's our base. We keep our faith based in God's word and we are strong. For us who believe in the word of God, we confess our faith like this. For God has blessed us, and we have received this blessing. We follow God because we believe in God. And we have all received all his blessings from God. Yeah. And with our faith, we want to please him. It says in James 2, 20-24, But without no old vain man, that faith without works is dead. That right there will chip somebody up. <laughs> Verse 21 says, Was Abraham our father? Justified by words when he had offered Isaac his son on the altar. That would trip someone up if they don't study. Mm -hmm. Seeing how thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect, and the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and he was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Right. Now someone will read that passage of the scripture. And will come out that we should merit, we merit our way into him. Yeah, by the fact it says, by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Now when I studied that scripture and studied, we don't study Abraham, but we just go back and dig deep into what really happened. Abraham had so much faith in God. God told him, I want you to go to a place, I want you to take your son. Yeah. I want you to sacrifice him. Mm. The son that you waited 25 years for, mm -hmm. that's the one. The one that I promised you that would be born through your wife Sarah, mm -hmm. that's the one that you sacrificed. It wasn't Ishmael, because people get confused about that. Uh -huh. But it wasn't Ishmael, because God promised, the promise came through the one that come from Sarah. Mm -hmm. That child, the one when you and Sarah were past the age of childbearing, that's the one I want you to sacrifice oh, to yeah. yeah. He took them on this trip. And they go on the trip. Isaac asked his father, mm -hmm. Father, where is the sacrificial lamb? Wow. Abraham told him, God will provide. Mm -hmm. And they got to the place where God told them to go. They built the altar. Abraham put Isaac up on that altar. And I can imagine Isaac saying, The sacrificial lamb only goes here while I'm not laying here. <laughs> but Abraham, with all the faith he had, was about to kill. Son. Mm. Yeah. But the angel of God, the mercy of God was shown. The angel of God stopped him and said, Do not kill the lad. But now I know that you will obey. Mm. Now I know yeah. you could be before everything. Mm. Now I know you trust and believe in me. Mm -hmm. Mm. His works didn't improve righteousness.
bondage to him. It was his obedience to God. See, our obedience to God through our faith. We got faith in God that we give in obedience. Through our obedience, that moved Abraham to what? To follow God's instruction. That's right. If we got faith in God, we're going to be obedient to God, and He's going to move us to work. He's going to move us to serve one another. It's going to move us to help those in need. And uh, we have a lot of trouble when it comes to helping those in need. There's a poor Christian who was convinced, who convinced him or herself that he or she can live the life of a Christian without being benevolent towards their brother or sister. It's vainly living in the useness of his or her own selfish religiosity. Their religion is impure and it is defiled. If we want to present a pure religion and an undefiled religion before God, we got to do it like it says in James 1 through 27, where it says, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father exists to visit the fatherless, the widows, and their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Uh -huh. I ask you, church, who are your brothers and sisters? And I know a lot of people will say, Everybody's in the church. But I, I may differ with you on that. But everybody in the church is your brother and sister. But the correct answer will be everybody in the world mm -hmm. is our brother and sister. They may not be a member of the church, but they are still your brother and sister. It's to help those in need. That's why they say you see one on the corner. Be benevolent to them. But maybe you may be servicing an angel. Yes, now God is saved if there was a Christian on the corner. That's right. You can say those that's in need. Right. We need to check we base our faith that we go through this pandemic in this world of faith. Do not let it cause you to question God. Right. Do not right. let it affect to serving God. Right. Now, this is another one. I'm, I might get in trouble for this one, but if at Greenville we, we have those who still don't want to come to the building. Mm -hmm. They feel Zoom. Now, I understand when it, this pandemic first started, we all zoom. But now things have gotten a little better. And we come into the church. Now I gotta ask the question to them is, where is your faith? Where is your trust? Are you trusting God to navigate you through this pandemic? Or are you so weary that Satan put cast doubt in your mind that God can actually lead you through this? Mm -hmm. yeah. He didn't protect us up, up to this point. Amen. So why is he gonna leave us now? Right. Right. I go to church every Sunday morning that we have. And if I can go, we have a resume on Wednesday, but by the time I get out of work, church will be over the time I get home and drive over to Richardson. So I zoom in on Wednesdays, but I don't let it, I wouldn't know, I'm not letting it stop me from coming to the gathering. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. He said the head 25 said, do not forsake the assembly as the gathering of, of Christians that come together. Mm -hmm. So when you, you're not coming on Sunday morning because you're fearful of this pandemic. Ask yourself, where's your faith based? Amen. If you're worried that you're going to catch something, where's your faith based? God has take do you go to work every day? Why don't you call your boss? I'm going to zoom in for work today. They ain't coming in today. We will not do that. Why? Do we trust the world more than we trust God? Now, my job, I drive around, I'm out. In different businesses, come in contact with multiple people. Uh -huh. But I make sure I have my mask on. <laughs> and uh, so I, I, don't, I would not let it put doubt in my mind. I would not right. let it <clears throat> right. make me doubt the Christian God. Right. And really, for me, when I what I have been through, right. That's by itself lets me know. Yes. God, watch you look through yes. me. Right. Yes. He can bring me through that. He can bring me through this pandemic. Yeah, that's right. yeah, yeah, the morning that I had my stroke, I was getting ready to go to work. I was five minutes from stepping out that door. Mm. And uh, I picked this phone up, and I'm looking at the phone. And my left arm dropped. So I raised it back up, and it dropped the other way. Mm. 
So I started holding it up. And I'm asking myself, what's going on? Went to the mirror, going through all the checks of what I knew. It happened with a stroke. The face feature was the same. My speech was the same. Hearing was the same. I could still feel everything. I called Jada and told me to come home. I said, what's wrong? I said, I think I'm having a stroke. So she, I heard her scream on the phone and she hung, hung the phone up. I called 911. They got there. I still was able to walk at the time. I went to the door, trying to unlock the door with the left arm. Mm. I, can, I couldn't even get it that far up. Mm. I said, man, so I unlocked the door. I walked out the tour. And they took me to the hospital. I was in the hospital. It started at 811. By 8.30, I'm in the hospital. All right. And they uh, asked me, hey, you hit your head. I said, no. I said, why? I said, you, have, you have a bleed on your brain. Mm -hmm. I said, what? And I'm, all that I'm thinking of, first thing I thought was aneurysm. I said, my head not hurting. And they come to find out that they said from the possibility that from birth, I had a little, a little leak. All this time it's been seeping, but it's mm. seeping so slowly mm. that it finally built up. But if I say all that to say this, going through all that turmoil, I was going to let God, this Satan, come in and distract me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I made sure that when you come in, I got something for you. Mm -hmm. I got the Bible, that came in my mind, I picked that Bible up and I started reading, and I started listening to the gospel song until they left. Uh, and and a, a Muslim guy came in. One of my, one of my friends, the Jerry Bones, one of Jerry's schoolmates. He he got everything the Muslims. So he comes in to visit me, and I said, "How you doing, brother?" I said, "How you doing?" We talked a little bit. And it went from this casual talking to the back. Hmm. We got talking about God, and I started telling him what I believe. He telling what he believes, and about all this and that. And that was Satan. Yeah. Coming up trying to bring us here from a different right. angle, but he's coming from an angle that seemed right because it's coming from what God says. Mm -hmm. But I thank God that my parents that taught me how to study, that I was able to distinguish mm -hmm. and see where he was coming from. Mm -hmm. He's not going to give you Satan. So I let you, this morning, church, I want you to admonish you to check where you're basing your faith, right. keep it based. In the face, and that is the word of God. Amen. Everything you may go through, through all the turmoil and trials you will go through, keep your faith based on this word. You will bring it to And you see by other people that happen that it has brought them through. And I testify to everybody that if you knew what I went through and see where I am today, you would believe in God. Thank you. God told me that the stroke I had was a thing with most people that have what I the way I had it. Normally don't survive, and they do survive. They don't be up physically like I am. I, I recovered in five months. Mm -hmm. And he said, that's the best from God. And I only know he's a member of the church. But he said, that's the best from God. Yes, and I said, amen. I thank God for blessing me that way, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. To everybody, do not doubt God. Trust him. Yeah. Yeah. Obey him. Yeah. Keep your faith based on the word. If anybody yeah. who is not a member of the church, and you want to become a member of that church that's going to heaven, and it's your opportunity to, to, to confess Jesus as your Lord, your faith in Jesus, that he's the Son of God, come down and be baptized. And if you're a party member and you're straight off that bandwagon that's heading to heaven, this is your opportunity to come back and get back on yes. board right. to that train that's riding to hell. Yes. If anyone needs to pray, why don't you come to God this morning? we got to stand and sing. Why will you linger wandering from the foot of God? Hear you not the invitation or prepare to meet thy God?
Governor Grant. Yes. And we have so many fine ministers. Man. I mean, we have Jeff too. We have Brother Walker. Man. We have our superstar over here. We got <laughs> Brother Shaw. And all of y'all do such a beautiful job Amen. of leading us in the direction that we should go. Amen. And now we're going to start from our left. Outstanding message, bro. Amen. Amen. Appreciate it. I stand to ask for the strength and ask for the church to pray for my family. I've lost my uh, first cousin. Uh, we don't know any specifics on it that, uh, right now, but uh, keep us in prayer that we can be able to endure.
sermon. surgery on Friday, this past Friday, and so uh, she is in recovery, she's doing well, she made it through the surgery, she's doing good, but just keep her uh, in your prayers, as well as my, uh, my mother-in-law and my father-in-law uh, and their health conditions. just keep them in your prayers. Amen. Amen. I want to ask the church to pray for our family in Ohio. I lost a classmate this past week. sister informed me two weeks ago that uh, the doctor said she had cancer. Mm -hmm. She called me this week and said, Charles, God is good. I said, all the time. And she, she said, I went to another doctor and he said, I don't see any cancer anywhere. Thank God all that for coming in. Sometimes that when we are praying that we might not call out everything individually, mm -hmm. you know. And I've heard you, brother Derek, uh, bring up that same thing. And if we don't bring up your name or something of what you ask, you know, we all know that God hears us and knows yes, that God knows us. Yes, uh, I'm gonna do my best, but uh, you know, I'll be 71 as my wife. My, <laughs> uh, on uh, next Friday. So, uh, so uh, if I forget anything, uh, y'all just pray for me too, okay? All right, let's go to our Father in prayer. Our good and gracious, our almighty Father in heaven. Father God, as we come before you today, Father, we just like you for being so wonderful to us, so good to us each and every day. Father, we're here today, Father, as you know, to show reverence to your holy name. Yeah. And Father, as we show reverence to your name, we just like to praise you and honor you. And thank you, Father, for the many blessings that you bestow upon us yeah. each and every day, every hour, Father. We know that we're here because of you. Yeah. We'd like to thank you, Father, for all the many conveniences that you give us here. You give us so many conveniences, Father. Convenience is, Father, just to make our walk here on earth that much easier. Father God, we pray that we all be examples, Father, to our loved ones, to our children. Father, also to be examples to the people out in the world, Father. Yes, Lord. Father, that when they see us, Father, that they can tell that we are children of God by the way that we speak and by our actions. Father God, we pray for the ones who love lost loved ones. We pray. 
pray, Father, that you will comfort them. Please. Not only you comfort them, Father, but we all, as a church family here, Father, that we all comfort them, Father, yes. as they go through their heartaches, their trials, their tribulations. Yes. Father, we pray for the ones who stood up, Father, today and said that they've sinned and yeah. We pray, Father, that you just continue to bless them, Father. Please. And they continue, Father, on their walk. Going through their struggles, Father, <coughs> to be a better person and a better Christian. Mm -hmm. Father God, we pray for the ones that are in the hospital, Father, mm -hmm. in the nursing homes. Mm -hmm. The ones that are sick, Father. Mm -hmm. We pray that you bless them, Father, and restore them, Father, where you see Father God, we pray for the ones, Father, that are sick and here today in this congregation, sitting here, Father, with aches and with pains, Father. Yes. Being here, Father, to show reverence unto you. Father, we pray for the ones, Father, that are sick, Father, and have went through many different types of surgeries. Mm -hmm. The ones, Father, that have went through procedures and going through diagnosis and going through, Father, seeing the doctors, the nurses, mm -hmm. and the technicians. We just pray, Father, that you bless them, mm -hmm. help them, Father, to where they will be able to come out better on the other side. Amen. Father God, we pray for this congregation. Mm -hmm. We pray, Father, that we will all grow stronger. We pray, Father, for strength for each and every one of us, Father, to be a better person, a better Christian today, tomorrow, than we were the day before. And, Father, we end this prayer today, but we don't, and we'll never end our love for you. Amen. These prayers we pray in the name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 at this time that we ask that you would prepare your minds for communion with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as I share this, these scriptures with you, I ask that you would find yourself in these scriptures. See where you are located in these scriptures. This is the Last Supper. That Jesus had with his disciples. It may be the last time that we be able to commune with the Lord. And so when I share this, please open your hearts to these scriptures. Don't just listen to them. From Matthew chapter 26, I will be beginning at verse number 17. Beginning at verse 17. Now the first day of the feast of the unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And Jesus said, Go into the city to such a man and say unto him, The master said, My time is at hand. Yes. All right. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the evening was come, and he sat down with the twelve, and as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. 
And they were exceeding sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written to, of him. But woe unto the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? And he said unto him, Thou hast said. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Let us pray. Father God, we know who we are. But you know who we are about. And God, we want to be ready when Jesus comes. Because we know he's coming again. You've given us an opportunity to fellowship with Jesus through this communion. To be of one mind. To know that in doing what we're about to do, to partake of the broken body and the shed blood of your dear son, helps keep us in company, in communion, in relationship with Jesus. We ask that you would bless both the body and the blood of your dear son. Bless every individual that partakes of it. That they do it with an open heart, with a clear mind and a clear conscience. Not to show themselves unworthy, but to show honor and respect and glory unto our Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Corinthians chapter 16 brings our minds to consider how wonderful the Lord has been in giving it to us. We want to always cheerfully show our appreciation unto God, not just at this time, but every day that God blesses us with, to receive anything. But this is now in verse 16, beginning at verse number 1, concerning the collection for the saints. And the scripture reads as follows. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Please let us give for the church. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you once more again for blessing us with all that we have received. We ask, Heavenly Father, as we place back that portion that belongs to you, that we with a cheerful heart will give even more. Hear from our heart in a loving manner, because you have allowed us to receive it in a loving manner. Amen. 
may go for the spreading of the gospel. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. As Brother Stone comes forward to recognize our visitors, I'm asking you to, and if you have been, hopefully you have been keeping up with our Wednesday night Bible classes, there is one more that is coming your way. And we're going to be on lesson 11. And it's going to be focused on the reasons why I'm a member of the Church of Christ. But the reason why, one of those reasons, and it's the 11th reason that's given by Brother Brown, is because it is undenominational. It is undenominational. When I was in the world, in the denominational world, I didn't know that I was in the denominational world. Nobody tells you that. You just listen and believe what's being told. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it's important that as we teach the world the gospel of Jesus Christ, that they need to realize that the body of Christ is undenominational. Right. We're not a break, break off of anything. We are it. The body of Christ is it. Amen. If anybody breaks off, that's what they did. But we're going to learn what that talks about in the last lesson that we're going to present to you from my standpoint. But we're going to finish out this book on the next time around. I appreciate those who I focused in on Wednesday nights. I pray that we continue to do that. And brother, and a fine job, fine job, Brother Shaw. And as he's mentioned in this lesson, it's important that we study. Because you can't tell what you don't know. Amen. You can't share with anybody what you don't know. And that's what the roadmap is all about, is God's word. Wonderful lesson. Uh, I'm here to, to wish our visitors, you are honored guests, mm -hmm. and any of our visitors that want to stand and have a word.
preaching. Amen. 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 Amen.